I want to discuss Joe Valaro, who I featured in my last video, the Gambino associate who was instrumental in bringing down the family in 2008. Like most Italian young men, myself included, he found the mob fascinating. Understandably, this is an error in judgment and was the turning point for most of us. When faced with that crossroad, we turn left instead of right. To put this in further perspective, it's the equivalent of young girls idolizing prostitutes. I believe the fact that Jovi's father, being a knock-around guy, didn't help matters in his situation, as most young men want to emulate their fathers. Proof of this can be seen in his early arrest for loan sharking and extortion. But the turning point for him took place when he met Nikki Carrazzo in federal prison. Most likely, he tried impressing Nikki by talking about his trucking companies in an attempt to depict himself as an earner. What he was doing in actuality was opening the door. Here's the mistake a lot of businessmen make. And a perfect example is depicted in the movie Goodfellas when Sonny Bamboo, the owner of the Bamboo Lounge, offers to make Pauli Vario a partner in the business. And we all know how that turned out. When a legitimate business slips into the claws of the mob, it's only a matter of time before that business gets destroyed. When Joe V gets released from prison as an associate of Nicky Carrazzo, he's like a teenager waiting to show off his first car. He wants everyone in Staten Island to know his new status. From the onset, he began making money with the help of the Gambinos. Money could be looked at a lot of ways, but here's the way I was taught. You need it to live, but should never live for money. It's obvious that Joe V lived for money. Because he had two choices, either be a businessman or be a drug dealer. One don't mix with the other. To be more specific, the Gambinos was definitely shaking Joe V down, be it in a friendly extortion type of way. Nevertheless, he volunteered himself for that, as well as allowed it. In fact, it was the price he paid to have a direct line of communication with the captains in the family. Based on his conversation, the one he mistakenly recorded, coupled with his grand appearance at Mizu days after the takedown, is a direct display that Jovi did not comprehend the seriousness of what he was involved in. I have no idea where Jovi currently is. Hopefully for his sake, it's far from those New Jersey rest stops. I'm sure if he reflects back on everything, he'll now understand that he never should have got involved with Nicky Carrazzo and the Gambino family. Honestly, he didn't need them. He possessed a good business mind to run his companies. Maybe he wouldn't attain major contracts, but I'm sure he would have done just fine. More importantly, whatever he did make was for his keeping, and a percentage didn't have to be handed over to other people. In closing, this story is a good lesson for many people, and it all boils down to that crossroad. Whoever you are, when you find yourself there, and you're choosing a direction, turn right instead of left. Mm -hmm.